machine, I think the epoch I would visit would be the days of Roman gladiators, or perhaps a time when kings and queens ruled Europe during the Enlightenment. What about you, Livingston? I would travel back to when I accepted this position and talk myself out of it. Oh, shush, you cranky old curmudgeon. You love this job, and we all know you love it as well. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. You've already met my malcontent valet in the glamorously adorned waif is Tangella, while the chap dressed like he's on a quest for the grail is our handyman, Andrew. The purpose of adorning our friends into this pastiche of wardrobe for the ages is in honor of tonight's film, which is 1962's The Magic Sword. Starring Gary Lockwood, Basil Rathbone, and Estelle Winwood, this film entails the fabulous saga of a young prince attempting to rescue a fair maiden from the clutches of an evil wizard. It's almost like Game of Thrones. Exactly as a matter of fact, if the latter were adorned with marginal acting and substandard special effects. Westeros! And joining us for this sword and sandal extravaganza will be the fabulously talented Margot McReynolds, fashion model, cosplayer, and costume maker. Margot will show us some of her creations, tell us about her many adventures, and offer her sage observations about tonight's film. And I'm sure she will be quite amused. Right, good point. That's enough, Tangella. So don't go away, because it's going to be a fun night of glorious fights and frights right here on Creature Features. You know, every time you flog that poor man, I'm presented with a doctor's invoice. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do, machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Some moms travel miles for a present. The Cash's mom traveled the country for her child's life. To St. Jude. Yep. Cash was diagnosed in California with a rare cancer. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital tailored a special treatment just for him. Our research helps save kids everywhere. Want to do lunch? Well, someone is feeling a lot better. Go to stjude.org or shop wherever you see the St. Jude logo. Hey, we're Quiet Riot here at the House of Rock in Santa Rosa, and you're watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. It is Saturday night, and we are doing Creature Features with Satan. Satan's spawn. 
Satan's pretty little spawn. You know, I, I thought we were going to have you out in like a normal like outfit first and then bring in the stuff, but you're like going for the gold. That's far the... too boring for me. It's go big or go home. I love big. <laughs> and I love home too. You should go, you should go big at home. I do. Which my family hates it. In my home, right? <laughs> I am. We are with Margot McReynolds, and I, I don't even know how to describe you. You've done everything but modeling and cosplay. That's what I do predominantly. Predominantly. Predominantly, yes. Right. But you do other stuff as well. We'll talk about that in a bit. Okay. <laughs> and you're going to show us more costumes. I am. And you're going to show us photos, and you're going to tell us about this film, which you've seen. I have. And I've seen as well, but I'm going to act like I have not seen it because it's been a long time. <laughs> you know, I can watch a movie... You know, one weekend and two weekends later, I'll totally forget. It's like a new movie for me. Oh, wow. Like Lucky small, you. I can't do that. <laughs> very small video collection. All right. So we're going to watch the film, and then we're going to hear all about Margot and her creations. But first, let's dive into the magic sword, right? Okay. All right. Off we go. Stay with us. He's gone again. He left home hours ago. What good is my sorcery if I can't help my own boy? Answer me, someone. <coughs> He's not fooling me. I know where he is. He's at the magic pool again. Love, love is his curse. He is in love. Do you think I don't know it? I've tried to cure him of it. Am I losing my skill as a sorceress? No. No, Sybil. Doesn't my witchcraft cure snake bites, chillblains, carbuncles, pink eye, hang nails, and unhappy memories? Yes. Yes, Sybil. Then why can't I rid the boy of this, this fever? George is a man, and human. Human, yes, but hardly a man. He's a mere boy of 20. In love. George, already a man, in love. He ought to be at home learning a good trade, like mine. <laughs> Pool of magic. Obey my wish. Bring her vision into my sight. That's right. That's right. Find her. She's at the palace. No, no, inside. Perhaps the throne room. No 
try the try the sunken garden in the palace by the Oriental pool. That's right. That's right, there she is. There she is. I hope the cold water's chilled your hot temper, my lady. No, I'm just as furious as ever. Oh, princess. Oh, it's easy enough for you to talk. You can do whatever you please. Fall in love, fall out of it again. Squire one day, a stable boy the next. But I might as well be a prisoner in a tower. I can't even speak to a man, let alone have him look at me. It's the penalty of being a princess. But even a princess should be allowed romance. Oh, how will I ever meet him? Who, my lady? The one I could love. You'll have your chance someday. You run along. But you're gone. I'll dress myself. Well, then what will you do? Oh, what I always do, sit here and dream. Princess Helene. Who are you? What do you want? Stay away. Don't you come any closer. No, princess. I'm going to take care of you. Shout, George. I can hear you. I must leave here. She's in danger. Who in the netherworld are you talking about? Princess Helene. I loved her from the first moment I saw her. <laughs> A reflection in the water and you call it love, you silly child. Something terrible has happened to her. Let me see what you're talking about. Magic mirror. Show me what has upset my boy. <laughs> The princess is gone, Your Majesty. She's not in her quarters, not in the garden, not by the pool. Yet no one saw her leave the palace. We've searched everywhere. Then turn out the guards, Branton. We have done that, my liege. Until she is found, no one will be permitted in or out of the palace. Who is this? We found him skulking within the eastern postern, my liege. He won't speak. There are means to make him speak. Sir Branton. Your most serene majesty, you can call off the search. The princess, your daughter, is in my castle, under lock and key. Who are you? Rodak. The sorcerer? I'm flattered that my reputation has preceded me. Lodak. You say my daughter is at your castle. But why? How have I hurt you? Why have you done this thing? The answer is very simple. Your father executed my sister for witchcraft when she was only 18 years old. I have waited until your daughter reached that age so that my dragon could relish the flesh of the princess. Ludak, I beseech you. Beseech nothing, my liege. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information.
There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. You're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. Oh, look, Livingston. Hawaiian Cruise Lines has a ship departing on July 7th for Honolulu. You should book us passage. You have a prior engagement, sir. You will be at Creatures Con. I will. I will! In fact, we'll all be attending Creatures Con on July 7th in San Ramon, California. Join us and a number of horror, sci-fi, and TV superstars for this stellar event. There'll be all kinds of magical things on the itinerary, like contests and prizes, autographs and selfies, merchandise and movies, motorcycles and airplanes, and elephants and rhinoceroses, ninjas and sumo wrestlers, and... In any case, you don't want to miss it. Learn more at the website below and get your tickets today. Rhinoceroses? One can only hope, Livingston. See you there. You know, Margot McReynolds, supermodel and cosplayer. <laughs> this film, you know, this whole thing where he's like doing the peeping Tom thing in the looking. It's a little pool. creepy. I'm no, it's more than creepy. And he's he thinks it's okay. I know. You know, I, <laughs> I, some people would say it was all right back then, but I think even back in 1962, that would have been considered a bit. Yeah, and the fact important. that his mother is so okay with it, she's like, "Yep." He's looking in the mirror again, no big deal. Right. Well, you know, if they were to remake this film, I think they would skip that part. I would really hope so, or yeah. they'd be looking at a big complaint department. All right. Well, speaking of big complaint departments, <laughs> those are the biggest wings that have ever adorned our guest chair. They are also the biggest wings I think I've ever built. Those are beautiful. And you did this all by hand by yourself. I did. In four days, I built the wings and the tail. Four days. It's all I did. Nothing else got done, and my dog quickly began to hate me because he wanted food. <laughs> so, well, you got to feed your dog while you cosplay. I, I, mean, that's, I, tr that's, I try. I set a timer. Friends at home, if you're a cosplayer, feed, feed your the dog. pets. <laughs> feed all the pets. So, is this part of like a character that uh, exists in the... No, this is a self-made character. So, have you given it a name? Not yet. I want to wait till the helmet is done. There's this big draconic helmet oh, that will helmet be with it. It's with still it. in the works, so I didn't bring it along with me. And there will be a bodysuit, but that's a couple months down the road. But you've got the best parts done now. Exactly. The, the, the hardest room. parts. <laughs> and four days, you said. Four days. Four Again, days. I did nothing else but four days. <laughs> that's fabulous. No, no, Thank they you. came out absolutely wonderful. Thank so you. how did you get into all this? Well, I originally started, I worked in fashion and production, right. a lot of modeling, um, and I was, you know, I was always the pretty girl. I was always the pretty generic redhead, large chest, large tush, small waist. So I was put into boudoir, lingerie, and fashion, and it was very generic. It made me feel a little dehumanized. I didn't feel like myself, and I'm a huge nerd. I grew up with six brothers, very nerdy grandmother, and uncle who played video games all day. So I've always been a big nerd, and they, just my grandmother one day said, this isn't you, you know, my photos, it's me and I look great, they say, but it, it wasn't me in the mirror kind of concept. Right, so right. I slowly started pushing and going to conventions and meeting people who were in that world and kind of surrounding myself with more nerdy people. So now you're a cosplay queen. I wouldn't say queen, but thank you. <laughs> No, well, I, I think you're one of those types that like have their own booth and do autographs. It is things. a goal. I have people who already order prints from me. Right. And I've done miniature meet and greets with people and I've built costumes for people by request. A miniature meet and greet? Is this for like little people? Come to? <laughs> I mean, I am short, so, you know, I just bring in more people like me. Oh, so you're the miniature part of miniature meet and greet. I am actually weirdly shorter than most female cosplayers. I feel like I a know, lot I of them are like... I thought it was a like, wonderful opportunity for midgets. Yeah, you know, if they want to come meet me great i'll hug them too i love midgets 
I do All right. Too. Well, what do you say we get back to this film? Sounds great. All right. We're, something <laughs> good's going to happen, right? I hope so. Because remember, I don't, I don't remember this film. Something good's coming. All right. <laughs> Off we go. Back to the magic sword. You guys stay with us. Lodak, I shall find your castle, free the princess, and see you destroyed. Finding my castle is no great task. It's a short journey of about a week. You simply follow the yellow star of the north. The trick is how to get there, alive. I shall. I'm afraid not. Now seven times do I curse the road that lies between this castle and mine. Let no one live who dares the dark journey. Let no man face my seven curses and reach the dragon's lair. Your curses won't stop me from reaching your castle. The Princess Elaine will make a delicate dish for my dragon in exactly seven days' time. And now, if you'll excuse me... Mr. Branton, my daughter will die. No, sire, for I will rescue her. You'll risk the seven curses? For Helene, I'd risk 70. The man who saves Helene will have her hand in marriage and half my kingdom, too. Trust me, sire. No, no, it is I who must save the princess, not Sir Branton. I love her. Do you think I'd let you face Lodak's sorcery? I'm not afraid. Three hundred years ago, my father and brother were devoured by Lodak's dragon. And my family were great sorcerers in their own right. But they were no match for Lodak. I am no match for Lodak. I confess it. I fear him almost as much as I hate him. But, Sybil, I... You will stay right here at home where you are safe. You can have anything you want. But oh. you're staying here. All I want is my freedom so I can save the girl I love. But you wouldn't understand that not being mortal. I've tried to do my best. Oh, I know you have, Sybil. Can't you call me mother? I'm sorry, mother. You were only a week old when your royal parents died from the plague. I found you, reared you as my own son. Oh, you've been kind and loving, and, and I'd do anything for you. But I can't stay here with you anymore. I'm not a child. I'm 20, and I love Helene. Talk to me of love when you're 420. When your human 20 is old enough to feel love and misery. Now, give me my freedom. I must say you're being very difficult tonight. Oh, well, boys will be boys. Uh, we'll, we'll have to cheer you up. Watch Mother now. <laughs> Mother, not that trick again. <laughs> George, I've never seen you like this before. Look, if you'll cheer up, forget about that girl and Lodak. I'll let you see the presents I've chosen for you when you're 21. What sort of presents, Mother? Come along. I'll show you. Do you like him? He's magnificent. He's yours when you're 21. His name is Bayard. He's no ordinary animal. He possesses magic. This is the fastest horse in all the world. No other steed can beat him.
<laughs> See this? You'll wear it when you ride the stallion. Does this armor possess magic too? No weapon can pierce it. And this is Ascalon, the blade. None like it since the world began. It defies all swords in battle. Black magic is overcome by a touch of the blade. So there, all yours when you are 21. Then I'll let you go after Lodak for my revenge as well as your own. And with the help of their magic, I could save the princess now. No, you're not old enough. You wouldn't know how to use them. Oh, just let me, just let me hold the sword. Just to get the feel of it, please. Just for a while. <laughs> Very well. It feels like a part of my own body. Oh, I feel stronger. Of course. <laughs> now come along. It pleases me to show you something else tonight. Who are they? Once, the six most valiant knights in the world. Yeah. It's real black magic, Mother. I wish I could take the credit. I've never been as good as that. No, it was my brother. You like Ascalon, George? It's just great. Did the sword do that? Certainly. One touch of the blade and it opens and shuts floors, doors, walls and portcullises. Mm. It shuts things too, you say? What's down there? Well, I haven't been down there in centuries. It used to be my brother's safe deposit box for spells, enchantments, magic ritual and the like. Want to see? Is there any other way out if the crack were closed again? Depends how hard you work at it. A cousin of mine took 80 years to whomp up a spell that blew the roof off, but don't be afraid. We won't close the crack behind us. Well, I'm not afraid. Um, you go first, Mother. Coming, dear? Yes. George! George, what have you done? George, let me out! Goodbye, Mother. George, son, let me out this instant. You can't leave me here. I told you about my cousin. I'll come back and let you out after I've rescued the Princess Helene. With a magic armor, magic sword, magic steed, what can stop me now? You don't know no that George, George, let me out. If I had six brave men like these, I'd have nothing to fear. Monsieur, you have been a long time to come, but on the behalf of my friend, merci bien. Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. During a seance in the late 1800s, the early 1900s, Sarah Winchester would have roamed these wondrous halls.
When people think of ghosts and the paranormal, uh, they tend to think of dark things, scary things. So many legends uh, that have been built around this place, you can only uh, imagine uh, the darkness that could be conjured up. An audience of 50 people will gather in the music room. They will experience some things real, some things not, and they will leave here not knowing which was which. You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. <laughs> You are extremely terrifying. Just the scariest undead subhuman thing on TV, and I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you, so I'm gonna have to block you. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're, they're blocked too. Sutherland from Power Rangers, and you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. Go, go, Power Rangers! This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Miss McReynolds went to do a wardrobe change, right? Yes. She's changing into something else. But in the meantime, uh, we've got uh, Miss Tangelo, shall I say Queen Tangelo, with a singing sword, which she seems to have acquired from Mr. Andrew. Is he all right? I doubt it. Oh, all right. Yeah, you should be nice to him one day. He's got a birthday coming up soon. Maybe, maybe for his birthday as a gift, you could not beat him. Yeah, all right. That would be interesting. All right, it's time to read those letters we get from you. What do you got for me, Mr. Livingston? Number one. Number one. That's the best place to start, isn't it? Indeed. All right, first letter is from Chuck and Margaret Davis in Crockett, California. We've heard from Chuck and Margaret before, I believe. I Have don't recall. No? All right, we'll see. Good tidings and good evening, Livingston. I am hoping you can review your library of films and locate a copy of It Came From Beneath the Sea, or possibly Invasion of the Saucer Men. We are big fans of the 1950s monster movies, as well as the three of you. Well, good, they've finally acknowledged us. Keep up the good work, and we're looking forward to another delightful Saturday night with all of you. Well, we're looking for a wonderful Saturday night with you as well, Chuck and Margaret. And they go, P.S., have you ever considered having a small live audience? Oh, let me tell you what, how it would work with a live audience. They would not be live very long with Tangella wielding swords and explosives. It's a bit dangerous. We have to work out the insurance, but maybe one day, right? What do we got next? That is a short one. All right. Dear Vince, your show is awesome. Oh, there's no name here. Oh, dear writer, thank you. You're awesome as well, but you forgot to put your name. I've been watching since episode 64. That's a long time. We have never found out what Livingston's first name is. Can you please enlighten us? Mr. Mr. That's his name. Thanks for writing, no name person. And one more? One more. The la oh, this is a long one. All right. This one comes from Linda Prashley in Bellevue, Washington, and she writes, Dear Creature Features staff, stuff. It looks like stuff, but I think she meant staff. I've tried to watch your show and have really tried to like it, but it's just not happening. Between the mediocre guests, or well, tonight's guest is not mediocre, the second-rate cast, oh, well, that's a possibility, and the substandard films you present, I can think of a number of things I'd rather do than watch your show. Here are some of them. Clean my cat's litter box. Rub sandpaper under my eyelids. Eat a cactus. 
stand in line at the Department of Licensing. That's like the DMV, huh? I believe so. Right. Peel potatoes or remove one of my shoes and fill it with my own vomit. That's dreadful. Sounds like I, one of your bandmates. I know. I hope your show improves soon. I'm running out of shoes. Yours truly, Linda Prashley Bell. You watch it. Well, I, I really have no response to that, Linda, but I hope you get some new shoes. That's it. That's it. That is it for letters. If you would like to send us a letter, use the email address you see appearing right here. Or if you'd like to put it in the post using stamps, envelopes, mail trucks, and the federal government, you'd send it to this address here. We'll be right back with Miss Margot in a moment, but first let's get back to the magic sword. Your Majesty, I pledge my sword to your service, my life to our mutual hope, and my heart to the Princess Helene. Very well said, Brenton. But I can't help but feel a little nervous. You still won't take these 50 knights who have offered to ride with you? No, sire. They are all brave men. But one man can venture where 50 cannot. You are the bravest of all. Return Helene safely, and I'll be the proudest father-in-law in Christendom. That's a strange ring, Branton. Do you wear it for luck? Luck must not play a part when your daughter's life is at stake. Go, my friend. And all my good wishes go with you. Your Majesty, these knights and I have come to serve you in your hour of need. That's very kind. Who are you? I am Sir George. A knight by virtue of 400 years of noble lineage. Welcome, good sir. These are my comrades in arms. Sir Denis of France. Votre Majesté, c'est un honneur. Sir Erwick of Germany. Mein Kaiser, we come to serve. Sir Anthony of Italy. A servizio. Sir Pedro of Spain. To servido, Your Majesty. Sir James of Scotland. Our hearts grieve for you and your sorrow, Your Majesty. And last, Sir Patrick of Ireland. We pledge our lives to your service and to the Princess Helene until she's safe. Gentlemen, speaking for the King, we are grateful for your offer. I am sure that you can be of immeasurable service to His Majesty while I'm away. That's not what Patrick meant, Sir Branton. Oh, you know who I am. Have we met? No, I've often seen you. In the field? Not in the field. And I also know you wish to marry the Princess Helene. Oh, quite true. You are all welcome to stay and dance at my wedding. Oh, many thanks. But I'd prefer to dance at my own. You're talking riddles, young man. Don't try to solve them till we've rescued the Princess Helene. We? <laughs> I shall rescue Helene. Monsieur tried to understand. We are all sworn to save Sir George's beautiful lady. Sir George's lady? What does the Frenchman mean? Only that I love her and I intend to marry her. You arrogant boy. Do you know the perils of the dark journey? We do, Sir Branton. If you don't share our enthusiasm, we shall be happy to go on without you. How dare you? Your Majesty, have I your permission to give this stripling a lesson in the use of arms? I shall not draw. Except in behalf of Princess Helene. Oh, coward. Draw. Enough! That's enough! Mr. Branton, I like these knights. Surely there's safety in numbers, you and seven good swords. Seven swords and seven curses. When do we start, Sir Branton? Now!
I'm Elaine. We know. We heard you were brought in this morning. I'm Princess Laura, and this is my sister Grace. This is our seventh day. Seventh day? Our last day, unless... Well, surely you don't believe that about the dragon. There were others here when we arrived, but they're gone now. Well, then your father will do something to save you. Well, his army is probably approaching the castle this very minute. Do you really think so? Of course. You'll be on your way home by morning. <laughs> Two sisters. We're free to go home now, Father. Arrange for our release. You're not going home. Surely you must have spoken to him. I've had three long, dull sessions with him, but nothing could persuade him to give up what I asked for. I don't believe you. He'd pay you anything. Nothing. Instead, he sent an entire company of his bravest knights on the dark journey. The poor lads never even reached the third curse. Take them away. Come on. No! No, I can't do this. I can't do this. That just can't be happening. There just couldn't be anybody as cruel and evil as you. Oh, really, Helene? This isn't the first time that a princess has been fed to a dragon. And at least around here, it happens only once a week. Unless you get what you want. What ransom are you asking for me? I'm sorry, but you happen to be a particular case. I'm not asking any ransom for you at all. Then why did you bring me here? My little pet will be hungry again in six days' time. Come, let's watch. No, no, please don't. Please. Uh, Listen, wind carries well. Don't turn your head away. You'll miss all the fun. See, it all happens very quickly. Now my little pet can sleep. Oh, it's horrible. But it won't happen to me. Their father sent a company. Well, mine will send an army. I hate to disillusion you. Uh, actually, for a while, your father seemed content to let just one knight undertake your rescue. Oh, don't blame your father. The knight talked him into it. And who is this very brave man? I'm sure you know him. Sir Branton. Sir Branton. You don't like Sir Branton? Oh, come now. A damsel in distress can't afford to pick and choose. Anyway, don't worry. Neither he nor his companions will ever get here. Companions? I thought you said Sir Branton was alone. He would have been. But some uh, foolhardy young man named George insisted on coming with them. George? Of course, you don't know him. Well, where is he? Uh, would you care to see him? See him? Certainly. I'll show you the young fool. Tell me, which one is George? The youngest. He's in the lead, riding with Sir Branton. Those who are wise will turn back now. Styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. As men tied to the earth, we dream of visiting the stars. As men tied to the stars, we will dream.
This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. And you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned! Welcome back to the show. We are still with Miss Margot McReynolds, model, cosplayer, and costume creator. And I want to talk about this costume, but first this film, you know, with the, the kidnapping of the princess, it's starting to look like Donkey Kong. Or like Mario, when King Bowser swoops Mario. in and steals Princess Peach and he runs off to a different castle. Was that the name, Princess Peach? Of all the names. <laughs> princess Peach. For all the names they could pick, they picked Peach. You know, Peach. <laughs> Tangela was wearing like a queen princess outfit tonight. I think I'm going to start calling her Princess Peach. Well, good. It's Tell good me name. how that goes. I've seen her. She gets aggressive. She does get aggressive, but not with me. Okay, there you go. She knows then you're better. Set. You're set. I mean, I'll send her back to Los Angeles if she Ooh, don't gets go there. <laughs> me in trouble. All right, well, let's talk about this. What do you call this, this remarkable outfit you're wearing? This is Cleona. Cleona with an uh, Irish accent, I detect. I. She's and an Irish Nordic elf. Irish Nordic elf. And this is a character you've created. This Again. is not from a comic book. It's not from the Marvel Universe or anything you know, like that. It's based off of a D&D character that I did one time. And the, the dungeon master that we had was very passionate about having accents and drawing pictures of your characters and developing them. You know, I love them. the Irish accent. You do really? so well. Thank you so much. No, it's wonderful. Yeah, we, we have so many Irish people here, and none of them speak like that. Oh, that well, that's no it. fun. No, you know, no half fun the people in the UK speak with that accent. And... All right, so, all right, this is something you created. Oh, you know, I think you need to collaborate with a comic book person. We have so many of them who've sat in this chair and they're like, I don't have an idea for my next character. Let's bring Cleona and she's a druid. Cleona. She's one with the earth and the animals. Right. So have you done this set at a convention? I have. I've actually just recently upgraded her though with a new fur cloak. 
I like a the fur cloak. waist cloak, whatever you want to call it. It looks like a Highlander type of thing. That was actually what I was watching when I was working on so this. So that's Scottish though, you know. I mean, I'm both, so I mean, I might as well let the influence carry through. I wonder what a Scottish-Irish accent would sound like. I can't do the Scottish. It. I can't do the brogue. I, I sound like Batman if he it was would, Irish. It would, it would be a language where you, you probably can hate yourself. It is you know, there's some rivalry. Aggressive grunting, I feel like, would be all you'd hear. And they'd be holding beer. Right, right. All right, so your first convention that you ever did this at, tell us what that experience was like. My first convention, I think I was 19. I went alone. I'm going to lose the accent. I'm not being Cleona now. But I was 19. I was going to San Francisco Comic Con when it was still around. Right. I dressed up as Poison Ivy. I had a couple others, but they weren't as good. Um, I didn't know anyone. I was completely scared, but I wanted to go and meet other nerdy people. And thankfully, by the end of the three days and the weekend, it was wonderful. I met so many fantastic people. I got to meet photographers. And some of those people I still go to conventions with to this day. So you had no cosplay friends. And by the yeah. end of this three-day event, I you started to like a have thousand. a little pool form. Right. Let's say a thousand. That's Let's say amazing. It. And that's how you should <laughs> do it. Don't be afraid. Make a costume. And just go do it, right? It's a That's very the loving community. Even if you feel like your costume is mediocre or simple, or even if it's just a t-shirt, right. we will hug you, we will love you, we encourage you, you. If you have questions about how to do something or how to build something, we're right there. It's the most loving community I've ever been involved in. Well, I have a question for you. Should we get back to this film? I think so. Let's do it. All right, let's get back to the magic soul right about now. is swift. It couldn't be that. What? No, 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 no. Just a stupid thought that crossed my mind. So the horse is swift. My ogre will kill them both. Are you quite sure? He beat you at your own game. So he did. He'll save me. 
I know he will. Not a chance. No one has ever survived the seven curses of Lodak. That was only the first. Still not a sign of our gallant commander, Sir Branton. Is the man haven not to pay respects when poor Ulrich and Pedro are laid to rest? Nor is the man a coward, not to have lifted his sword against that monster? Branton's no coward, I'm sure of that. I will talk of the devil himself. We missed you at the burial, Sir Branton. My regrets, gentlemen, are as deep as your own. But since every minute counts, I thought it wiser for me to ride ahead and reconnoiter. What did you find? Mount your horses, gentlemen, and come see for yourselves.
This is Carol from Petaluma. Uh, last Saturday, I enjoyed the broadcast, but you, my little friend, you're an idiot, and you make a fool out of yourself. I wish they would replace you. Tangella is fine. Livingston is fine. You're a pain in the butt. Bye. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, or science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. We're the Dive Bar Mermaids at the NorCal Pirate Festival, and you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned! Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are still with Margot McReynolds, <laughs> and she's a cosplayer and a costume builder and a designer. Before we get into that, though, this film, you know, it's quite colorful. I would say so, too. And typically, no, well, for us, because we show so many black and white films here, mm -hmm. it's nice to have color night. You know, all these people have purchased color televisions, and we have not been utilizing them to the fullest extent. Well, you're finally accommodating them. And you're so colorful. I love colorful costumes. The more color, the better. <laughs> no, color is wonderful. So I want to know about your skills, because you build these fabulous costumes. Thank you. And I want to know what kind of training a, co a potential cosplayer would have to endure to build something like this. Okay. So well, how'd you do it? Where'd you start? Are you a graphic designer? Nope. Never. I've never been to college for anything that would revolve around this other than makeup. So you're a seamstress? Nope. No? I can't sew to save my life. Well, I don't understand how one can build such an elaborate costume without those skills. YouTube. YouTube, YouTube. is the magical helping hand for cosplayers, as well as just reaching out to other cosplayers. I've reached out to many and been like, hey, right. you know, do you have any advice on how I could make a bodysuit? And they've been kind enough to respond with the best tips. Well, that's wonderful. So it's not like you, you would like go on Amazon and buy a book. No. I mean, you can. There's lots of professionals who have right. put out books and tutorials, and I usually just watch the ones on YouTube. I don't bother with the books. I'd rather watch the video. But I, I think the takeaway from this is make friends. Absolutely. Make, make friends. See, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Most of life applies that way, but it applies but you, to cosplay too. No, but you know people who can show you how to do things. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's, so how long did this take to build? This one was a bit longer than the dragon. This one took me probably about a month. I was taking a my month, time that's though. All? About a month. In it's, your spare time, because you've probably got a day job where you've got to do other things as well, I have, right? I'm pretty fortunate. I have a very relaxed schedule with right, my work. It's right. one week of hell, and then I move on to a week or two of relax right. before it picks up again. And during your relax, you build these... I do. Elaborate. I sit in my room and 
watch old movies while building costumes. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. I used to do that as a child. I used to like watch Doctor Who and build plastic more. Doctor Who. <laughs> or what do you think of the new one? My, I have mixed feelings, but I'm such a sucker for Peter Capaldi. Uh, so when he left, I was a little heartbroken. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I do like Doctor Who now. But, I, you mm -hmm. know, I think it should be called like Mrs. Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. right. They should mix it up a little bit to emphasize that there is now a no, feminine No, it's like Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man, right? Mm. You know, we need to be able to tell. Equal representation in, in our TV titles. Guide, you look and it says Doctor Who and you don't know which one it is. Mm -hmm. Right. All right, agree. I'm going down an odd road here, so let's get back to the film. Okay. All right, let's do off it. we go. Back to the Magic Sword, <laughs> 1962. You guys stay with us. This seems to be an unsavory region, Sir Branton. Would you be sure now that we were taking the right road? Or is it a road we're on at all? The fog's getting thicker. Where's Dennis? Where's James and Anthony? James! Dennis! Anthony! Je suis ici, mon ami! I'm over here! Well, then keep with us! Keep close! Where's Anthony? Anthony! 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 I'm over here! Which way are you? Here! Where's Anthony? Where's George? We will ride on, gentlemen. They are lost for good, both of them. Not both, look! Anthony has joined Pedro and Ulrich. Forward, gentlemen. Sir Branton! 
Senor Branson? Well, good morning, gentlemen. Is it good? May we ask what you're doing here? Well, someone has to do the thinking for you. As your commander, I thought it wise to spy out the countryside. The upper floor of this mill was the only vantage point. The last time you spied out the land, Sir Anthony died. You can always turn back, Sir Dennis. You have heard my answer to that. As you will. Shall we wake the others and ride on? Gentlemen. Bungler. I almost killed him. I tried. I could have killed them both, but that shield, I couldn't face it. That shield. Yes, that shield. Magic. Of course the boy has magic. Sir George? How else could he have escaped three curses? Magic. And I didn't even see it. That foster mother Sybil is working against me. The magic is strong, Lodak. I know it. How will you counter it? Don't you need your ring? Not for Sybil's magic. But once I get my ring, that's the end of Branton. And the princess will be fed to my dragon. All I have to do now is to redouble my magic. And all you had to do was destroy that Frenchman. You were too slow. You need to no. be taught a lesson. No, no. Tall, Hag! No. Tall! No. For five, six, ten hours. Tall until I need you again. No. Oh, no. Greetings, Sybil. Lodak. You're looking older. Let me see, we haven't met in what, a um, hundred years? I don't want to talk to you. But I want to talk to you. You've caused me quite a lot of trouble. Lodak, if you touch a hair of my boy's head, I'll fight you. Not a chance. You never had any real talent for witchcraft. You were always tenth rate. Tenth rate? You are quite helpless, Sybil. In four days, the Princess Elaine will be fed to my dragon. And your George will die even sooner than that. There's nothing you can do except look in your stupid mirror or magic pool. And now I'll take care of that. No, they come back, come back. Mirror of magic, bring me a vision of Lodak. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest! You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Hi, I'm Linda Blair. And if you want to be scared, stay tuned on North Bay Television, coming up. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Ten, three, ten. 
I? <laughs> Helpless, am I? <laughs> so I can't do anything to help George. Oh, Lodak, Lodak, you'll be sorry for this. Dear me. It's a long time since I've tried this one. Was it one tablespoon or two? One, I'm sure. Where is the unicorn powder? Oh. Now, let's see. Was it two mandrake roots? What else goes in? Eyes. No, I won't have eyes in this one. <gasps> yes! Yes! Sybil's cooking up. It was a long recipe. What have you done, Sybil? <sighs> I've finished poor George. That's what I've done. I've taken his magic away from him completely. George has no more magic. Dennis! James! James! Dennis! Where are you now? There are the tracks of their horses. I can't believe they're ahead of us. How could they take this heat? It's getting hotter by the moment. <laughs> you had no right to let them go on without us. What could I do? They were up before daylight and belligerent at that. Sir Dennis said that he couldn't trust me to spy out the land any longer. Well, you could have wakened us. They swore they'd be back before daylight. Dennis! James! If the heat's any worse up ahead, they'll be burnt to a crisp by this time. I, I, I cannot breathe. I... Can I move my legs? No, go! Go back! Go back! It's, it's death up here! Go back! Stay back! We are... Stay back! Stay, stay, stay back! Heavenly Father! George, will you be looking at that man? He's not even hot and we're burning. Why? Yes, why, Brandon? That, gentlemen, is my secret. <laughs>
Brett! Where the devil is he? He must be in here somewhere. You mean I was in here, George? Branton. I'm sorry I have to leave you now. A long-standing appointment with the Princess Helene. And also with my partner, Lodak. Partner! Yes, his castle is just over the hill. Any uh, last words for either of them? You want to escape us, Branton? <laughs> I already have escaped you, George. <laughs> What do we do now? We break out. With Ascalon's help. Ascalon? Oh, did you know my sword was magic? It opens floors, walls, gates, anything. It was magic. Like your horse. Perhaps Slodak's magic is a bit stronger. Oh, and it's no use. You'll only be dull in the blade. There must be some other way out, Patrick.
Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Hey, I'm Dave Hackett, pro skateboarder and artist from Encinitas, California, and you're watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. Yeah. This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. You know, Margot, I'm a bit confused as to what's going on in the story with the ring. I, I, I saw this film and I don't recall this whole controversy with this. If I'm following it correctly, the other prince, not George, the other one, stole the ring. And now he's got a bargain with the evil wizard where he'll do this whole quest and get the princess and get the, the throne and then give him back the ring, I think. But it's, it's so still So he's unsure. like the Lord of the Ring. A little bit. You know, he's got the ring and he's trying to return it. All right. All right. Oh, God, bite. Well, enough about that. I want to talk about this. Yes. What is, what is all this? This is my vaudeville-inspired poison ivy. And what makes it vaudeville? It's burlesque. What makes it burlesque? The giant burlesque fan. Oh, so you could do the fanny dance. <laughs> yes. Right. Everyone always asks me to dance? do one. What do they call that? A fan dance. Fan dance. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're not very creative with the names of their dances. It's the right. fan dance, the balloon dance, the martini glass dance. We're not creative with our names. <laughs> right. It's straight to the point, I suppose. So you built this as well? I did. Everything was built from scratch, once again. All this? Yes. I and took... Did you grow the ivy? No. I'm not that fancy. I can't... I'm zero green thumb. Uh, I kill every plant. I kill a know, cactus. ivy is... It, it just put a... A leaf someplace, and the next thing you know, it's going to be all that's over That's true. Walls. I should try that. Yeah. I, th I think that would be a beautiful kitchen. So this is made from, I take it, plastic. These are just, ivy. yeah, these are right. decorative ivy. and I. But the corset mm. is made of this as well. Mm-hmm. Every leaf Show me on everything corset. has that been is, individually attached. That is wonderful. Corset, the bottoms, and fans. Those are all individual ones that you had to, like, sew or glue. Glue, yes. Glue. Hours and hours of sitting there and doing it. <laughs> and so is it like rubber cement or is it like... This was just hot, a hot glue gun. Hot glue. Nice and easy. Right. The contact cement I only use on things that are really heavy and would fall off with just hot glue. I suppose it's more bendy as well. It definitely has more flexibility. Right, right. Holds better when and you pull the corset. And that's not your hair, because I saw no, your hair does no. not look like that. Mm, no. It's a nice shade of red. You know, you could you could almost turn that into like a Little Mermaid outfit. I have an aerial cosplay that you I have made. An aerial cosplay? She has a six and a half foot trident as well that I made. Six and a half feet? Yes. Well, I'm not good with size proportion, yeah, clearly. How tall are you? I'm 5'4". Five 5'4". Four. Five four. So... Is that the way it works? You need a trident that's like a foot and a half larger than you? Well, I tried to imagine if it was her father's and she stole it. And I pictured he'd oh. have a bigger trident. Oh, that makes sense. So I figured she stole his, so ran away. <laughs> when you go to a cosplay event, a convention, does somebody have to like push you around in a tank? Because you have fins, right? No, what I did is I did it um, more almost like, gosh, what would be the right word for it? It's... I don't know the right word to describe it because it's something I kind of winged it. your feet. <laughs> My feet show. But it looks like... With heels. Flippers. No? No. No flippers. It's just like a, a thin cloth and then a larger cloth to cover my tush on a band. Oh. It's... Yeah. You know, these are problems know the right I've word. never had in my years of rock and roll, having to, like, hide my tush and things like mm -hmm. that. Oh, it's, it's nice that you have it all figured out. There's a science to it, right? 
a lot of trial and error. <laughs> trial and It's been and a lot of era. failed costumes, or I've had to retire costumes. Like, this one's getting retired at the end of this year, and I'll make a new one. Well, it, you, yeah. you should save it for, like, the Smithsonian Institution. I want to see if I can they buy get these things. You know they have someone like price. Nicole Kidman or Uma Thurman or someone to sign it. Well, someone who's nice. played those characters in various forms. Right, right. It's kind of my goal. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say we get back to this film? Sounds like a plan. All right. We're going back off to the magic sword, and when mm -hmm. we come back, we're going to hear about what you're doing next, right? Okay. Okay, off we go. <laughs> Stay with us. He's escaped again. Sir Patrick, too? No. Patrick is finished. But Sir George is riding this way. There was no way out of that cave, Lodak. Was it magic? No, not magic. Then how did George escape? I think, yes. Something stronger than magic. The power of Patrick's faith. He's coming. He's arriving at the castle gate. Where is he going? Helene. No, Lord, I won't allow that. Don't worry. It'll all work out most satisfactorily, I promise. He doesn't know the way to her cell anyway. He doesn't have to. The spell of the sixth curse is already leading him on. Is this more of Lodak's magic? I'm as real as you are. How did you know me? Oh, I think I would have known you anywhere. Lodak has shown me visions of you just to torture me. Coming nearer and nearer. But he always swore that you would never live to get here. But I'm here, and we'll leave together. Oh, I'm too happy to even think. Don't think. Just let me hold you. We must go while we can. What happened to Sir Branton? Rather ask what will happen when I get him within my sword's length. Oh, he's somewhere here in the castle. Let him go. What does anything matter except us and our freedom together? I'll see if the way is clear.
quietly. Welcome, Sir George. I was beginning to think you'd never get here. Brighton! You looking for this? My lady, it's time for us to leave. Well, no, Helene, no. But I want to, George. Aren't you forgetting something, Branton? Hmm? Oh, the ring. I keep my word. All right. Take her, if you still want her. Oh, I want her all right. And she wants me. Mm, always and forever. Helene, what is this? Helene! Did you really think I keep my word once I had the ring? But I don't understand. Where is Helene? Over here. She belongs to me. We made a bargain. I don't bargain with mortals. I destroy them. Monster! All right, Branton. It's time to take care of you. Prepare her for the dragon. Take Sir George to the dungeon. Mustn't give up, or it's the end of him, the end of them both. What, what will you, you do, Sybil? I must think. Think. Try to remember the right recipe. And give him back his magic, Sybil? Of course, I have to. Where did I go wrong? Witches of Hecate, blacker than black, demons of shame, flesh on the rack. It, it's the next line. That's the one I got wrong. And it rhymes with rack. Swack? Smack? Snack? No, no, none of those. No, I'll go to Lodak's castle. That's what I'll do. I'll give it some thought on the way. Save him, Sybil. I'll try. Well, here goes. <laughs> George, this is the real Helene, I swear it. All right, now, go ahead. Show me how a pair of young mortals in love bid farewell before they die. Oh, very tender. But a little late, wouldn't you say? Oh, I love you, George. Always remember that. I love you, Helene. Come, Helen. Come. You'll have a good view from the window, Sir George. <laughs> Hair styling for the show was provided by. Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. During a seance in the late 1800s, the early 1900s, Sarah Winchester would have roamed these wondrous halls. When people think of ghosts and the paranormal, uh, they tend to think of dark things, scary things. So many legends uh, that have been built around this place, you can only uh, imagine uh, the darkness that could be conjured up. An audience of 50 people will gather in the music room. They will experience some things real, some things not, and they will leave here not knowing which was which. A 
single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. You can't control where it will land, only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how to protect your community from wildfires. You are watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. Hurry. Please, quick, hurry. Hurry. Quick, cut the ropes, my wrist. Thank you. I'm grateful to you. My sword has lost its magic, but it's still a sword.
George? The ring. Yes, the ring. Sorcerer can cross me now. Watch your boy, Doc. If only I could give him back his magic. Witches of Hecate, black and black, demons of shame, flesh on the rack. It's the next line. If only I could remember the next line. <laughs> Blacker than black, demons of shame, flesh on the rack. Give to my boy the power to attack. you with all the damnation of hell, curse upon curse. Defiant mortal, you dared to challenge me. Six curses could not destroy you, but now you must face the seventh. Me, the invincible. Now will I grind you to dust. Now all you vile creatures of hell, listen to me as I cast the seventh curse. Sword into the dragon ends the magic sword. What do you think of this film, Tangela? She's seen it before. You know, she likes dragon films. Do you like dragon films? I love dragon films, but they always die. It's not fair. I, what, what's up with that? 
I don't know. They have a bad rep. I think we need to start fixing no, that. No, dragons should not always be slain. Exactly. No, it's not right at all. Mm -mm. It's not right at all. All right, so what, 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 what do you've got going on next? I'm just going to keep working and building bigger and bigger cosplays and keep going to as many conventions as I can. Getting better and better and showing your wares. Mm -hmm. So what shows are you going to? I will be going to yours, Creature well, Con. Well, it's not ours, but we'll be there as well. Creatures Con. Yes, I will be July there July 7th, 7th. In San Ramon. I plan to be there. I'll be attending Crunchyroll. I hope what to be- What in God's name is Crunchyroll? Crunchyroll is an anime convention. Oh. They predominantly focus on anime, but people who dress right. in Marvel and DC come too. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Crunch and where's Crunchyroll? San Jose. San Jose. And it's you a four-day convention. That's that's a great place to go for conventions. Mm -hmm. The yeah, convention center beautiful. there is beautiful. And people in San Jose are so nice. Mm -hmm. right Most of the time. Them. Some of the tech people All are... All the time. Hmm. No? Okay. All right. Agree to disagree. You've had different experiences. <laughs> All right, lots of shows, more costumes, yes. and the sky is the limit, right? Absolutely. All right, absolutely wonderful. How do we learn more? Well, Instagram, you can go to nerdwar underscore right, so cosplay. you got to do the at thing, right? Yes, the little at sign. And then how do you spell nerdwar? <laughs> N-E-R-D-O-I-R underscore and then cosplay. C O S. And cosplay, all that? It's all like a that. long one. And oh. knowing my luck, I spelled it wrong. So just look right, for the we'll, poison we'll, ivy picture. We'll confirm <laughs> it before we, we do this. So, well, that's absolutely fantastic. Well, mm -hmm. I, I want to thank you so much for coming and showing us. Thank all you all as well. Work. The only thing that was missing was popcorn. Oh, well, you know, Livingston is always at the ready to bring popcorn. All right, next time I know. And you know how, the, how fast microwave popcorn is? He can do it in less time. He's figured out a new type of science where he can make microwave popcorn that takes two minutes and only 30 seconds. It's amazing. Okay. All right, next time. Science. All right, and as far as you guys are concerned, thank you so much for staying up and watching the show with us <laughs> and having fun. You know, it's nice to have an audience because, you know, sometimes people don't watch the show. So you guys out there are our friends. Everyone else, maybe not. Have a wonderful weekend. See you next week. So, Margot. You know, you've you've got you've piqued my interest with this whole cosplay thing, and I, you know, I think I should try it out. Do you mm -hmm. have any suggestions on where I might begin? I think you really need a new wig.